The 2020.2 version of RubyMine includes support for the Liquid Template language, a variety of new Ruby intentions, full support for GitHub pull requests, and more. In this video, we'll take a look at some of the most exciting new features available in this release. With 2020.2, RubyMine supports syntax highlighting for the Liquid Template language and allows you to find errors in your code. You can also perform other standard actions, fold and unfold code constructs, comment and uncomment lines and blocks of code, and reformat Liquid files. Liquid support includes live templates that allow you to insert code constructs into your code, such as if blocks, assign tags, and so on. As you can see, RubyMind suggests completion for Liquid tags and filters, including those specific to Shopify and Jekyll. As always, we're continuing to work on Ruby 2.7 support. With this release, RubyMine correctly recognizes beginless ranges. If you try to use this syntax in the previous Ruby versions, the editor will throw an error. The IDE also correctly recognizes a shorthand syntax for forwarding arguments to a method. We've added several improvements for numbered parameters. An ordinary parameter is defined warning now pops up when you are using numbered parameters in a Lambda expression with named parameters that have already been defined. Finally, you can now quickly convert named parameters to numbered ones, and vice versa. We've also added a variety of new intention actions that allow you to quickly refactor your code. You can now introduce a new local variable for any expression. Just place the caret at the expression, press Alt-Enter, choose Introduce Local Variable, and specify the name of the variable. As you might already know, RubyMine allows you to extract variables using a dedicated refactoring action. Now you can perform the opposite action and inline a variable using the inline local variable intention. The next action allows you to quickly add accessor methods for instance variables. Place the caret at the required variable, press Alt-Enter, and select the desired method. With the new version, you can now sort hashes alphabetically by their key. Our next set of intentions is related to conditional statements. You can split a condition into multiple if statements by placing the caret at the Boolean operator and pressing Alt-Enter. The opposite action merges nested if statements, allowing you to use a Boolean expression instead. With the split else if and merge else if intentions, you can split the else if statement into a nested else if branch and vice versa. The merge sequential ifs action is available on the else if or if keywords. It suggests merging two branches if the code inside these branches is exactly the same. With the invert if else action, you can flip the if else operator so that the condition is negated and the branches are switched. For a ternary operator, you can do the same with the flip action. The next intention allows you to navigate between super and overriding methods. In a Rails application that uses lazy keys, you can use a dedicated action to expand the key to its full form. Let's take a look at a couple more useful intentions. The flatten namespace action flattens nested modules and adds the scope resolution operators. As always, you can use the opposite intention to expand a namespace. One more intention allows you to switch between line and block comments. The add clarifying parentheses action adds parentheses to complex expressions that rely on operator precedence in order to clarify how the expression should be evaluated. You can also call remove unnecessary parentheses. Finally, the add underscores action adds underscores for long numbers to make them easier to read. For example, it adds an underscore every three digits for float values and every four digits for binary values. That's all the new intentions. Now let's take a look at other new features. As you may already know, we introduced machine learning completion in the previous release. With this release, we've enabled this option by default for Ruby since it significantly improves code completion suggestions. The next thing we've added is the capability to render documentation directly in the editor. To enable this feature, go to Editor, General, Appearance Page, and use the Render Documentation Comments option. You can enable or disable this feature for specific comments from the gutter. 
right-click a comment to adjust the font size. With 2020.2, RubyMine here docs are automatically injected with the language based on marker text. In our example, the code fragment is recognized as SQL and can be edited separately. You can configure here docs injections in the editor language injections page. We've made some improvements to the experience of running the IRB and Rails consoles using Run Anything. If you pass a custom option when running a console, the IDE automatically passes this option to IRB arguments. With this release, we've provided a new way to review and fix problems in code. A widget at the top right corner shows the number of issues in the current file and allows you to navigate between those issues. If you want, you can also switch between viewing all problems and viewing only syntax errors. Clicking the widget invokes a tool window with a list of issues. From there, you can jump to the code containing an issue, or you can fix issues directly from the tool window. Now let's take a look at some features introduced for version control systems. Starting with this release, RubyMine fully supports the GitHub pull requests workflow and you no longer need to switch between the browser and your IDE. All pull requests are displayed in a dedicated tool window. From this window, you can open a pull request, assign it, and view its history in the timeline. In the Differences viewer, you can submit reviews or add comments for any line of code. Finally, you can merge pull requests from within the IDE. The next highly anticipated improvement to Git integration that we've introduced is the ability to squash local commits from the log. Select the desired local commits in the log tab of the Git tool window and squash them into one. With this release, we've improved the pull, merge, and rebase Git dialogs, so they now have better visual consistency. With the new design, you can quickly see which git command will be executed. Finally, RubyMine 2020.2 now supports git installed in WSL2 for working with projects located in Linux or Windows. If you open the project from WSL, the IDE will automatically switch to git from WSL, and it will allow you to use all git-related features in the IDE. And that's it! You can learn more about new features from the What's New page linked in the description. Thanks for watching!